Now, the Prime Minister spent much of yesterday effusively pressing the flesh in the House of Commons tea room, something he hasn't felt the need to do since the last leadership election two and a half years ago. And this morning, Boris has pulled out of a planned visit to Lancashire due to, according to Downing Street, a family member testing positive for coronavirus. Of course, Prime Minister's questions was a bruising affair for Boris Johnson yesterday, whose carefully worded almost apology over those Downing Street mid-lockdown drinks did little to quell the opposition. The Prime Minister maintains that he did not think the event was against the rules, but apologised for the impression the event gave. Well, Sir Keir Starmer and a host of opposition MPs immediately demanded his resignation. Well, why don't we talk to one of those those Labour MPs this morning? Graham Stringer is the Labour MP for Blackley and Broughton and can join me... Now, welcome to the programme, Graham. Um, First of all, the Prime Minister apologised yesterday. Uh, Do you think that will go to any length to shore up his position? In this country, normally when people uh, apologise, it's natural to accept it. I think there are two things about this. One... uh, It was was a half-hearted apology, which he came into the tea room afterwards and said it wasn't really his fault. So, like a lot of things the Prime Minister says, sadly, it's uh, it's not uh, believable. But the issue of which he made his half-apology is is so serious. People in the country were unable to see dying relatives. Uh, He'd set the rules about what you could and couldn't do, and he's broken them. Uh, So he's broken his own rules, he's telling people to do something he's not prepared to do. That's hypocritical, but almost as important as that. Uh, I I had my doubts right the way through that there was any science that said it was dangerous uh, going in the open air. People in Derbyshire were chased with drones for walking along empty valleys. People were moved off park benches on Merseyside in Brighton in in the middle of sea breezes. Um, so some of the things that he'd introduced weren't necessary. And that party in Downing Street shows that he knew it. I myself was told to uh, get off an open stretch of grass in the first couple of weeks of that lockdown, um, living in a flat with no garden. That was quite extraordinary to me. I'm sure many people have uh, some of those less serious examples as well. Although I suppose also during that week, of course, this was two months into the lockdown, there had been one step of easing. You were allowed to meet one friend outdoors, socially distanced by the point of the 20th of May. That week we did see a number of viral photographs of full beaches of uh, socialising during that very, very sunny week. I wonder if, in your opinion, those sort of photographs might have influenced the behaviour of those making the decisions? Might have influenced the behaviour of what? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Might have influenced the behaviour of those who attended the party, seeing those crammed beaches uh, that week. They may well have done. Uh, but the fact is, this was the hub of the country's decision-making machinery. They had been condemning people for going on uh, beaches. The police had been enforcing uh, uh, the rules as they had been laid down in, at, at other beaches, in parks and all sorts. People were moved on from sitting on park benches. Uh, but in a sense, it's not those details. It's the fact that the Prime Minister was was telling the country to do things and not doing it himself. And I'm afraid it's not the first time uh, he's uh, been caught out either lying or being hypocritical. And he does, you know, I'm a Labour MP. It's part of my core business to criticise the government and show when they're, they're failing. But at the same time, I'm, I'm British and I want this country to do well. And it does this country no good to have a prime minister who nobody can trust uh, because he's, he's regularly uh, told porky pies. 
Now, a couple of months ago, your party leader, Sakir Starmer, was uh, asked if he would call for the Prime Minister's resignation over another matter, and he said that he wouldn't because he didn't think that the Prime Minister would accept his advice. Now your party leader, as of yesterday, is calling for the Prime Minister's resignation. Does that mean he thinks that he will accept his advice now? Uh, well, the Prime Minister's hiding behind uh, an inquiry he's set up carried out by an official who is responsible uh, to him. So while I'm sure she's got integrity, it's very difficult for somebody who's employed by somebody else uh, to come to a really uh, harsh uh, decision on it. So there's going to be a wait. I don't think the Prime Minister uh, will voluntarily resign, but I think he may well, in the course of time, maybe after the May elections, be forced to resign uh, by his backbenchers. So it's part of the normal dance of, uh, of politics. Uh, I was in the chamber yesterday when the Prime Minister made his half apology. And although the, the government backbenches, they had masks on, you t could tell they were silent and looking glum almost to the point of self-harm. There's not a lot of uh, support left in the Conservative Party for him. Uh, they're making calculations about who uh, would be best to replace him and whether their electoral chances would increase. But he, he's effectively a political dead man walking now. That is a striking, striking uh, phrase there. Uh, in your assessment then, the most likely time that the Tory MPs may make a move on the Prime Minister is in May. Yeah, he, he's there. A lot of the Tory MPs have never liked him. Uh, they've never liked his lifestyle, they've never liked the way he approaches uh, politics, but they've uh, tolerated and supported him and benefited from him because he is one of the greatest campaigners the Conservative Party uh, have ever had. There is no doubt he reaches parts of the electorate or has reached parts of the electorate that other Conservative M MPs can't. So. If, he, if, if the first test of his electoral uh, appeal, whether it's remaining, is the local elections in the first Thursday of May, uh, if he fails that, I think that those people who never supported him and those people who supported him because he's a proven winner in referenda, in the London morality in a general election, if that magic is gone, uh, then I think that's the time when he will be most vulnerable. Fascinating analysis there. Graham Stringer, thank you very much for joining us this morning on The Briefing. Really, really interesting conversation. Let's move.